make government work more efficient. Number one, give you back your money. When the government starts telling the doctor how to be a doctor, uh, we all should be concerned. We've had one party control pushing their agenda and Californians are suffering for it. And that's exactly why I'm running. We need some balance. We have the extreme right and extreme left in most cases. And we, most of us are in the middle. Hi, everyone. Today, we are speaking with Senator Brian Daly, California State Senator, who is challenging Governor Gavin Newsom in the upcoming elections next week. Hi, Senator. Thanks for having me, Vera. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so here at LifeFeed, we strongly believe that journalists should be just transmitters of information and not translators of it. Uh, so every time when we're hosting a public figure, what we do is just go out and talk to people first. What uh, would people like to ask? And um, as soon as we announced our interview with you, immediately we got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of questions from Californians all over the state. Actually, Fun fact, we received questions from all the way uh, down south in San Diego to all the way up north in the city called Wairica, which is right by the Oregon border. And uh, what I can see is that no matter uh, the political party preference, uh, Californians are indeed concerned um, about the current situation in the state. So we have a lot to uncover today. <laughs> um, let me start with... Uh, a bit personal question. Uh, so it's not a secret that running as anyone but a Democrat is actually an uphill battle in California. Everyone knows that. So it's just a week before the election. Um, how do you feel so far? What's your feedback? What are the major challenges you have faced? Well, look, we know that uh, California has been controlled by the Democrat Party for a long time, and it is a blue state, as you mentioned. Um, but Gavin Newsom is completely out of touch with uh, hardworking, middle class, everyday Californians. If you're on a fixed income or an hourly wage, you're being destroyed by the policies of $2.50 a gallon higher gasoline than just right across the border uh, in Nevada. We pay 70% higher electricity rates. By the way, they went up 20% just last year. So I've been in the state legislature for the last 10 years. I represent about a million people, and I'm hearing from my constituents that uh, they don't want to leave California. Um, I'm not leaving California. That's why I'm running for governor. I am uh, a third-generation farmer. We raise cereal grains for seed, and uh, I, don't, I want a future for my family and your family, and I want Californians to be able to live the California dream and make it a reality. Uh, so that's why I'm running. We're hearing a lot of Californians who are suffering from the policies that come from an elitist governor who is running for president and who is out of touch with Californians. And so uh, to next Tuesday will be the election and we just need people to get out and vote and we will uh, make that California dream a reality. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so let's switch to the questions from our viewers. And the first question came from Daniel in San Diego. Um, what's your stance on California's education system? In your opinion, what is wrong and what is right with what we have right now? Our education system is um, controlled by the California's a Teachers Association, who also are Gavin Newsom's, one of Gavin Newsom's largest donors. And so we saw during the pandemic that our, our schools were locked down for 18 months. Our children were forced to mask longer than other, other children throughout the nation. And Gavin Newsom did it all because uh, you know, he has to listen to the teachers union because they fund his race and they'll be funding his race for president. Uh, but California parents uh, need to have the access to their schools and they need to be able to uh, follow the money. The, the money should follow the children and uh, we need to have choice for parents. And so that's what I will bring as governor, somebody who wants to make sure that parents have uh, a right in their kids' as, a say in their kids' as edu education. And that's what needs to happen in California's uh, education system. We are uh, 49th out of 50 uh, in the lowest scores in our nation and our and our schools are failing our children and uh, we need to be able to make sure they know reading writing and arithmetic and not all these uh, other social issues like what gender they should be thinking they are when they're uh, very young so those are uh, things I'm opposed to I want to make sure that California parents and children uh, get a great education and that the, that, that we actually have uh, transparency in the process. 
Recently, California passed a law to eliminate gas vehicles uh, in the next decade. Uh, shortly after passing that law back in September, the state also declared power grid emergency, asking not to charge electric vehicles. Um, as of now, there is no public plan to enforce the power grid. And uh, what do you plan to do about that if you are elected? Well, look, I'm not opposed to uh, electric vehicles. I'm opposed to the fact that we don't have an in infrastructure in place uh, to make those vehicles run. We would need 10 power plants the same size as Diablo Canyon, which is the only nuclear power plant left in California, uh, to power those cars. So we need to have an electrical system that is in place uh, before we force everybody to be in an electric car or, or not allow you to be able to buy an electric car in California. Uh, so as governor, I will make sure we have those things in place. And I want to make sure that the price of electricity does not continue to skyrocket. Uh, Gavin Newsom said he wanted to shut down that Diablo Canyon power plant about four years ago. And the ratepayers paid four and a half billion dollars to shut it down. And then two months ago, he wants to turn it back on. And the it cost the ratepayers a billion and a half dollars to turn it back on. So California ratepayers are the ones who are suffering because of bad policies and no plan. As governor, I will make sure we have a plan moving forward. I will not force you into an electric car when we don't have the infrastructure in place. And by the way, uh, those cars are 75, 70 to $75,000 for a base model uh, EV. And that's not, most Californians can't afford that. So I wanna make sure that we have uh, California oil available for them to be able to power their gas cars uh, and drive the cost of that down as well to make sure they can afford to put, putting food on the table. Thank you. And our next question is from Tamara in uh, Petaluma. And um, it's actually about another pressing issue uh, in California right now. It's about water. So mm -hmm. let me just quote. Water is the most important issue California faces right now. Without it, all the rest is moot point. Um, yet California community leadership continues to approve additional development that adds water hookups to a resource already unable to meet demand. How do you plan to address the critical issue of housing development versus water supply in a way that protects and sustains California precious and critically depleted life sustaining resource? Well, first you should know that California is um, prone to droughts and also floods. And so that we have a system in place where we capture that water uh, but unfortunately, over the last 35 years, our, our population has doubled and we have not uh, done anything for storage for water. Uh, millions of acre feet of water uh, go into the ocean every year. And we need to capture that water when we have wet years and be able to use it in dry years. I propose building a sites reservoir is just one opportunity that we have available, which, by the way, we funded, uh, at, partially funded, and Gavin Newsom uh, failed to put more resources towards it to finish it. You know, he talks about uh, fixing water price or water problems in California, but all he's doing is conservation. We have plenty of water. I'm a farmer. You cannot grow crops without water. You cannot live without water. In fact, we need food. We need water. We need it for our cities. We need it for the environment. And we need it for Californians. Uh, so I propose that we build reservoirs, that we capture that water and stop being in a constant crisis with water. There's no reason to. In fact, in 2018 was the wettest year in recorded history in California. Uh, you might recall the Orville Dam spillway broke uh, and that water has been let out in the last couple of years. And that's why we're facing severe drought now. Yes, we are in a drought, but we had water to be able to use, but they let it go to the ocean. So under my leadership, we will make sure that we manage that water in a way that we have it for dry years and capture that water in wet years. The next question is from Dennis um, in Concord. Uh, California is one of the most taxable states. What taxes could be easily withdrawn or lowered without any major impact on the economy? Are there any California state taxes that you would repeal if elected? Well, number one, we need to drop down the capital gains tax. That's 13%. It's the highest in the nation. And we are driving out businesses. 300 businesses, corporations took their headquarters out of California. And these are not just uh, small businesses, these are worldwide businesses like HP, Oracle, Tesla, Chevron, and, and many others. And that's a tax base that we actually get. So if we could drop that down, which we can, we can do it through legislation, uh, those companies will stay and then we'll actually we'll be able to um, receive taxes from them. When they leave, we don't receive any. Uh, the other thing that we need to drop down is our gasoline tax. It's highest in the nation. It's continually going up uh, across the board. If we drop the gasoline tax and diesel, 
that helps not only you when you put fuel in your car, but it also drops down food. We, I have a trucking business. And in the last eight months, it's been $200 a day just for diesel for one truck. That's $1,000 a week. That's $4,000 a month that everything we haul has to be, uh, price has to go up just to compensate for diesel. That's why you see, you know, eggs going up 40%, a loaf of bread's high and a gallon of milk. If we drop down those taxes and we drop down those prices of energy, uh, it helps you not only at the grocery store and, the, and your kitchen table, but it also helps you uh, get to your job and, and back and forth in your, in your vehicle. So as governor, I'll make sure that we have uh, oil available in California, that we use uh, the resource we have here available and stop importing so much oil and drive down the cost of energy in California. I'd like to expand just a little bit on uh, the issue of businesses and people leaving the state. Um, actually, just recently, um, I read a report in the New York Times. So according to the data they researched, 2020 was actually the first year during which the population of California went down in almost a uh, uh, century. And uh, businesses and people do leave uh, our state. This question came from Roman in Walnut Creek. And um, he's just asking, uh, what's your plan uh, to resolve mass uh, exodus of people and businesses out of California if you're elected? And what would you implement? What measures or what strategies to earn these people and businesses back? How would you encourage those who already left to possibly come back? Yeah. So the reason they're leaving is because they can't afford to live here or they have a better opportunity in other states. So I want Californians to be able to have the ability uh, to make the California dream a reality. You know, many people came here for the California dream and stayed. Uh, and that means that they were able to afford to live here. They were able to raise a family here. They had good education. Uh, they had no homelessness. They had good schools and they were able to afford. Most people are leaving because they can't afford or they don't like the education system or they can't quite frankly, just live here because inflation is skyrocketing in California because of the policies that come out of Sacramento. I will reduce those burdens, drive down the cost of energy in California, uh, put criminals in jail so that we feel safe on our streets and make sure our education system works. All those things are the reason people are leaving. And there's a lot of us who um, love California and, and know that it's a great state. We just need di different leadership. And that's why I refuse to leave. I'm running for governor for those reasons exactly that we can change California and make the California dream a reality. So folks will want to stay here and, and, and raise their families for generations to come. My family has been in California for 92 years and I'm not leaving. I want a future. We've built something here and I'm not going to allow uh, some elitist Democrat like Gavin Newsom to destroy the future of my family and your family. So uh, you need to go to BrianDaly.com. You need to get out and vote. Uh, because we can take back this election and take back our state and make the California dream a reality. We also received more questions regarding inflation and skyrocketing cost of living. So one of them again came from uh, San Diego. And um, Daniel from San Diego is, uh, he's just sharing some of his personal uh, things. Um, so he's saying cities in California, such as San Diego, have the highest electricity rates in the United States. Residents saw their bills increase by 60%, and now San Diego gas and electric state, they are going to increase rates again by 32%. So it's about 92% increase in a short period of time. Um, so basically, Daniel is asking, um, how will you stop this abuse of power if you are elected? Yeah, well, Gavin Newsom is running for president of the United States, and you need a lot of money to run for president. And so he uh, has d had a lot of corruption around him with fu campaign finance uh, monies coming in. For example, he did a no-bid contract for Kaiser Permanente, uh, who is his biggest donor, by the way. So it didn't go through the legislature till a year later. So during COVID, he made a deal with Kaiser for them, a good deal for them, hurt all the other health plans in California, which, by the way, drove up your healthcare costs because they had a sweetheart deal. Uh, and then he shoved it through the legislature to ratify it a year later. Uh, those are his biggest campaign donors. Uh, nobody's uh, controlling my campaign. I want California to thrive. I'm not interested in running for any other office other than governor of California because I want to stay here. So you can go to the FPPC and look at and find out who his big donors are. It's California Teachers Association who are destroying our lives of our children. It's big business that uh, is getting a sweetheart deal uh, and the power brokers 
uh, that run Sacramento are behind him. And that's that's the problem with California is he's not focused on California. He's focused on his own dreams of becoming president while he's making Californians live a nightmare. Our next question again is about um, inflation. Um, so uh, California is the fourth largest economy in the world, yet it has one of the highest taxes and cost of living, which forces many people to relocate. A lot of Californians uh, send us questions about inflation. So what's your plan to combat inflation if you're like well, Thank you for the question. Uh, it's the most important question of this campaign. The fastest way you can help uh, Californians be able to afford to live in California is drive down the cost of energy which I've talked about. We have a thousand oil wells waiting to be drilled in California at the desk of Gavin Newsom. While we're importing oil uh, from Ecuador, by the way, destroying the rainforest and making a global warming even worse. So I propose that we make California energy independent, build a grid that we can actually move power around in California. It will drop uh, the cost of energy in California. And there's also green opportunities out there to make gr green power like uh, geothermal, which is hot water in the ground, which you can make electricity with. You just simply pump it out, put it back in the ground. And it works when the sun's not shining and the wind's not blowing. We have been too heavy on uh, the two top things that they focused on, which is wind and solar. And California needs balance. We've seen power outages and we've seen our prices go up. The fastest way to make inflation go down is make government work more efficient. Number one, give you back your money. Number two, make sure we can drive down the cost of energy. And I have a plan to do both of those things. So the next question is about small business support uh, during the uh, pandemic. Daniel from San Diego uh, sent us uh, a question and comment regarding it as well. Uh, during COVID, Newsom enforced the strictest lockdown in the nation uh, while allowing rights to occur. Small businesses across the state were shuttered and California provided little support, even though the state continued to see record revenues. Do you think this was handled well and fairly? And what would you do differently? Well, I know that uh, Gavin Newsom told us that we uh, needed to be shuttered in at home and our business is not open. At the same time, uh, he was able to go to the French Laundry and have a dinner. He also told us uh, we should be wearing a mask while he was not wearing a mask. So uh, Gavin Newsom's a hypocrite. He's a failure to California. And I want to make sure that Californians have the freedom and choices that they need uh, to move forward. Uh, when good science is out there and it says we should not uh, be masking our children in school. I, I stood on the Senate floor and asked for him to relieve Californians, many of us did, and let our children breathe and be able to go to school in a, in a safe, good environment where they were doing it across the nation. But Gavin Newsom only listened to the California Teachers Association who didn't want to come back to school. So I will be, I will put Californians first and their businesses first and their families first. That's the thing I'll do with good science and we will be able to move forward just like many other states did after we saw the initial shutdown of the pandemic. Would you get rid of all the pandemic related mandates that are currently still in place in California if you are elected? Well, number one, I will uh, stop the state of emergency day one. That's one of my first actions and put the power back to the legislature and the governor instead of having what we have now, which is basically a dictatorship where the governor is making laws. And we will work together with the legislature to make the right choices for California moving forward. Uh, when it becomes mandates. I, I personally don't like mandates. I think that uh, one size fits all is not good for California. We need to be able to work through the legislature to bring balance. And that's what we haven't had for 25 years. We've had one party control pushing their agenda and Californians are suffering for it. And that's exactly why I'm running. Uh, we also received another question from Lisa. She's asking, uh, what's your stance on Bill AB 2098 and would you uh, veto it if you're elected? Oh, yeah, I oppose that piece of legislation. <laughs> when the government starts telling the doctor how to be a doctor, uh, we all should be concerned. Uh, thank you. Uh, next question is again about pandemic mandates uh, that are currently in place. Uh, Mary Ann from Pleasant Hill is asking, what about all the employees whose religious exemptions were denied? Should these people give their jobs back and will you support those efforts as a governor? Absolutely, 100%. I'm a believer and uh, nothing more higher than your uh, beliefs in religion. It's part of our constitution. It's where our country was founded on in our state. Um, so I believe that uh, you're right as religion it comes first and make sure that uh, you are able to um, retain those rights as your governor. We also received questions about the diesel uh, fuel shortage. Um, 
Lisa is asking, we have heard there is about 20 days worth of diesel fuel uh, before it runs out. I have already been told uh, there has been an impact on the East Coast. What would you do immediately to resolve the issue? Well, again, I want to make sure California is energy independent. We're totally reliant on a lot of other uh, nations, and there's a worldwide shortage due to, obviously, the war and other uh, factors that are out there, just uh, uh, OPEC cutting back. Uh, and California and, and our nation needs to be energy independent so that we're not beholden to uh, any other country. And so that's my focus to make California an energy independent state where we have uh, plenty of supply of, of the of the resources that we need uh, to make California uh, thrive. Uh, so let's say if uh, you are um, elected as a governor and we face the shortage, um, would there be any immediate steps that you would be able to take to resolve this issue? Yes, absolutely. Allow California oil producers to go back to work, which Gavin Newsom has basically said he was going to shut them down and he's doing that every day. And that's why we're having to import oil and also make sure that our refineries know that they have a future here until we uh, convert to some other source of energy. But right now, there are 30 million cars in California, um, uh, and about only one, one and a half million of them are electrified. So there's still a lot of people that rely on gas and diesel uh, to make our economy work, make sure that they have the availability of that and not force them uh, to be an electric car and when there's no electricity. So those are just common sense approaches that, yes, I will work on every day as governor to make sure Californians uh, have the resources they need to, to uh, make their, camp, their family uh, live the California dream. Thank you. Next question um, about uh, immigration. So let's talk a little bit about California immigrants. There are some interesting <clears throat> facts that I'd like to share with our viewers. Um, over a quarter of California's population, 27%, it's actually foreign born. Um, over half of those people, 53%, uh, are uh, naturalized US citizens. And another 25% have other legal status, green cards and work visas. I am myself a naturalized U.S. citizen with Ukrainian and Belarusian roots. So what should California immigrants expect from you as a governor if you're elected? Well, look, immigrants are a very critical part of California. I'm a farmer. I know that uh, firsthand. Uh, and they are part of our, our society. But I want to make sure that people have a pathway to citizenship that doesn't take seven years to get through. I just was... Uh, with a friend who who made his way through and finally got to become an American. It was a beautiful day. Uh, and so we need to make sure our borders, though, are secure. We're, we have a fentanyl and we have a, a trafficking issue major in California throughout the United States. We need to make sure our borders are secure so that we don't have crime and, uh, and criminals coming to our country and our state. But at the same time, we need a pathway to citizenship. So that's what I'm going to focus on, making sure that uh, these people are that are coming are here for the right reasons, and the ones that are here that are, uh, you know, victimizing Californians uh, have no place here in our state. So, can you expand a little bit on a, a path to citizenship? How will you approach it? Well, obviously, you know, it's a it's not just a, a state issue; it's a federal issue as well. But yes. hopefully, you'll be able to work with uh, the congressional folks and the president, and get, make sure we work on a pathway to citizenship in California. Is one of the largest states in the in the in the union, and it's also the fifth largest economy in the world. And we have a lot of immigrants here, so it's very important to California that we work with the federal government to make sure we uh, do what we ach want to achieve to do, which is get people here that uh, or have political asylum or who are uh, Cal people that want to come and make the California dream and American dream their dream, but also at the same time making sure that we secure our borders and make sure that we're not. Uh, losing people to fentanyl. We're, we're seeing a major crisis in fentanyl coming across our borders. 5,700 uh, people died last year from fentanyl poisoning. Uh, twice as many people died in San Francisco from fentanyl than did COVID. And we don't talk about it hardly at all. It's going to be a top priority for me. It's one of the reasons we see so many homeless people as well. They're addicted to these very inexpensive drugs and it's poisoning them. And so those are focuses I will make, uh, which, which uh, in turn, uh, helps with the immigration status as well. My next question, I know you have covered it a little bit before, but maybe you can just summarize briefly. What would be your solution to homelessness? Again, I want to focus on 70, about 75% or higher of the folks are addicted. And you cannot change your life until you get off your addictions. I want to make sure that we work with 
uh, counties and cities, number one. Gavin Newsom has started from the top down, and uh, we need to empower our cities and counties where they're on the ground at, at, the, at the level where the homeless people are. And then we need to also partner with faith-based communities who actually do get people in recovery and move them on their way to uh, having a productive life. We also need to drive down the cost of housing in California. Uh, we need to streamline the red tape to uh, be able to get housing uh, at a more affordable rate. We do it all the time in Sacramento for uh, basketball uh, arenas, and we did it uh, last year for the students at Berkeley. We streamlined it the, so they could build houses there. If we can do it for Berkeley students and for power brokers that own uh, basketball stadiums, we can surely do it for the average Californian for a residential home. It just takes the will of the legislature to get it done. Just a couple of more questions. Um, like I said, we have received a lot of them <laughs> uh, from across the state. Um, so Nicholas, who is a former truck driver, he's asking what you're planning to do about the 55 uh, miles per hour restriction on truckers in California and the restrictions by Newsom on trucking companies that are driving trucking out of California. Well, that's a, a great question. I actually own a trucking company. So uh, there are places where we should um, do some speed surveys. It's actually uh, less safe uh, when the trucks are going slow. So they need to go with the, with the rated speed of uh, traffic, uh, but only on interstate uh, areas uh, where, it's, uh, where it's appropriate. Uh, number two, we need to make sure that uh, AB5, which was a bill that was passed some time ago, which independent truckers uh, got crushed and Gavin Newsom uh, was uh, working just to uh, put them out of business and make them uh, be unionized. Uh, I will work every day to roll that back. Uh, if you're a small business owner, if you own a truck, I know about it myself and make sure that California uh, truckers have a, have a place here because we're short truckers and we need that to move our commodities around. And we're seeing supply chain problems because of, of that one single bill. So I uh, voted against that on every level. And I've worked really close with the trucking association to try to make sure uh, there is a pathway for those small business owners who are getting crushed by Gavin Newsom. Thank you. Uh, Cheryl from uh, Wilsonville, uh, she sent us a couple of uh, rather personal questions, but I still would like to ask them. Just imagine you are not a senator, you're not running for governor, you are just a California resident, right? One of uh, 40 million. Uh, so what would you aspire to be and do? What what would you like to do as a Californian? Well, I am doing it, actually. I'm, I'm a farmer and I continue to farm. We uh, just got rained out today so we're probably done planting my son's running our farm i just wanted to feed people that's all i want to do it's what my family has been doing for generations um, but unfortunately the government has uh, made it very difficult for me to stay in business and that's exactly why i'm running for governor i want people to be able to live their california dream my dream was to just uh, improve on our our generational farming operation and have a future for my children and so uh, i actually live that dream I, i'm still a farmer i work every day with my hands when I'm home, uh, but I'm here in Sacramento to make California work for you and, and the people who are listening because it's not working and you're not able to live your California dream because Gavin Newsom is living his by running for president and not focused on uh, the inflation and the crime and our education system, homelessness, and all the things we've discussed earlier. Thank you. Um, another question from Cheryl, it's also a personal one. Uh, what makes your heart sing? What makes you happy? Again, um, being with my family, I'm married uh, to my wife, Megan, who is, by the way, an assembly woman. She took my place in the state assembly. Uh, we've been married 23 years. I have three children. My oldest son is Chase. He's 22. I have a son that's 20, Reagan, and a 13-year-old daughter, Rosalind. Spending time with my family is a uh, precious time that we never get enough of. And so when I get time to uh, do something, I spend it with my family and my neighbors and my friends to just uh, uh, be be a community, quite frankly. Thank you. Uh, one more question from Cheryl. Um, how do you feel about Newsom's moratorium on death penalty because it's against his beliefs after Californians voted to reinstate it? Would you do the same on items in which you don't believe, for example, abortion? No, I believe in the death penalty. And uh, that brought up, that came up during the debate and I said I would reverse what he said uh, which was to make it not uh, a penalty in California. The Californians have spoke, and when a jury speaks, and those are very egregious crimes uh, that are very rare, and uh, I think that, that we need justice in our system. If we do not punish for crime, 
we're going to have a lot of crime. And that's what you're seeing in California is that Gavin Newsom has released 30,000 prisoners out of jail during uh, COVID. And we're seeing crime rise on our streets. And that's why if you have no punishment for crime, you're going to have a lot of crime. And in California, it's a revolving door. You get to, you may maybe may get caught for the crime, but you don't do uh, any time or there's no punishment for it. And we see crime rising and it's going to continue to rise until we put violent repeat criminals uh, behind bars and make our streets safe again. Mm -hmm. And we also did receive a lot of questions regarding crime, uh, because obviously it's one of the most pressing issues in California right now. Uh, so what would be your short and long term solutions to that? So, again, if you're a violent criminal, you will you will serve your full sentence. Gavin Newsom's parole board has been letting out uh, these criminals out on our streets. Uh, you remember a couple of months ago, Smiley Martin killed six people right here in Sacramento. In fact, the building I'm in has a bullet hole. Uh, in the wall from where they were there, six people died because he was let out early and didn't serve his time in prison. So I will remove the parole board that Gavin Newsom has put in place and appoint a parole board that makes sure that uh, people that are going to be violent criminals are not let out early. And then I want to make sure that uh, uh, counties and cities, uh, law enforcement people have the resources they need to be able to do the job they need to do to keep California streets safe. Thank you. Uh, just two more questions. Uh, so what would be the first thing you would do as a governor if elected? Uh, remove the state of emergency day one. Make sure that Californians can uh, get back to their full normal life. Uh, that Gavin Newsom is, is reluctant to uh, be able to let go of because he knows that he has the ability to, to make laws without the legislature. And that's unfortunate. And uh, last question, what would you say to those Californians who do not agree with you or your political party? Well, I've been in the legislature for 10 years. I'm a Republican. I have to work across the aisle to get things done. I've been very uh, good at getting things done in California by working across the aisle. We need that more. We need some balance. We have the extreme right and extreme left in most cases, and we most of us are in the middle. So we need somebody who can bring balance to the legislature, somebody who wants to stay in California, not run for some higher office and wants a future and wants the California dream to become a reality. Uh, that's what I would say to them. You can go to briandally.com. You can follow me on all social media platforms. And I ask you to get out and vote. We're down to the last you know, six days uh, till, till November 8th. And I'm asking you to vote. Very few people have voted. Uh, your vote will matter. A lot of people did not vote during the recall. We would have had a different outcome. So uh, I'm asking California to vote and vote for me. Um, I would have loved to have your vote. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much to all of the viewers who joined us uh, tonight. And uh, we will continue covering elections in California and in the nation. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for um, all news updates. Uh, thank you so much, Senator Darley, for joining us today. Thank you.